Howdy. In this video, we're going to go ahead and discuss the integral test. So, just like usual, I want you to pause this video real quick, and jot this down, we'll talk about it, and then we'll go through a problem. So three conditions must be met in order to utilize the integral test. And what I love about the integral test is if these three conditions hold, it never fails. The first, your series must be positive, your series must be continuous, and your series must be decreasing. And if all three of these hold, you're good to go. Now, a lot of professors I've seen in the past just say positive, continuous, decreasing, put check marks by it, and cool, you're done. But sometimes they want you to show that it's positive, continuous, and decreasing. To show the first two is pretty easy, but sometimes decreasing can get a little tricky. So the way that I tell or I show that my series is decreasing is first I change my a n into a function of x because I'm going to take a derivative. Okay, and I don't like taking derivatives with respect to n. That's just that's just a, a me thing. Trust me. Anyways, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that my derivative is always negative for the limits of my series. Okay, because if your derivative is negative then your function was decreasing. So for example, let's say I had the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. First off, I'm changing 1 over n squared to 1 over x squared, just so that's just me. You can leave it in n's if you want to. But I took the derivative, and if you look at the derivative, negative 2 over x cubed, it's very easy to see that this derivative will always be negative whenever x is greater than or equal to 1. Why do I care about the greater than or equal to 1 is because those were the limits of my series. I don't care what's going on when n is negative 5 because, well, I'm only looking between 1 and infinity. So that's how I show that it's decreasing. Now, if all the conditions are met and you are given, and if you're given some sum from n equals a to infinity of some a n, where a is just some number, wherever it starts, what you're going to do is you're going to do the integral from your starting point to infinity. I change my a n into that f of x dx. You will be doing an improper integral. And if your improper integral diverges, then your series diverges. And if your improper integral converges, then your series converges. In essence, what's going to happen is your series will copy the improper integral, okay? So, all you need to do for something like number one is does the following series converge or diverge? Well, one actually, before I get into that, one really quick way to recognize, hey, let's use integral test, is nine times out of ten, they're going to be u-subs. If I take a look at this, I'm like, hey, I can u-sub this integral. Do the integral test. Anyways, I definitely see I can u-sub this. And um, let's say we've already gone through the positive, continuous, and decreasing. Let's go ahead and just apply the integral test. And the way that you would do that is you would take the integral from 1 to infinity of x e to the negative x squared. Which, if you did your u sub correctly, hopefully by now we're comfortable with u sub. If you did your u sub correctly, this will turn into a negative 1 half e to the negative x squared going from 1 to infinity, so this is negative 1 half times e to the negative infinity, minus, and plugging 1 into there, I get e to the negative 1, which we know that e to the negative infinity is 0, and since e to the negative infinity is 0, multiplying that into there, you have 1 half e to the negative 1. Now here's the thing, I really don't care what it converges to, the point is, is that it converges. And because your improper integral converges, therefore the sum from 1 to infinity of n e to the negative n squared will converge. It will converge by the integral test. So recapping this real quick, check to make sure it's positive continuous decreasing. To show decreasing, take the derivative, show that it's negative. And then if that's the case, just do the integral. And if the integral diverges, then your sum diverges. In this case, my integral converged, so so does your series.